Had a good crowd in to see the clash of two of the star sides. And of course, Langer's team today. With Brad Thorne back in the second row. Kevin Walters, of course, at 5'8", as Peter has already pointed out. The man of the moment, Darren Lockyer, at the back. And they're lying fourth on the competition table. Eight and three for Brisbane. They've lost two of their last three, though. Stephen Clark, he's a good referee, this man. He blows time on, the Raiders put it into play. Big crowd roars as Brisbane get first touch. They've become the manly of the 90s, Brisbane. Everybody wants to beat them. Wendell Saylor is the second of them, tackled and arrested just inside his own 40-metre line. Philip Lee is playing dummy half, 15 today is Lee. No Driscoll, no Plath, and Brisbane on their fourth now with Brad Thorne back from injury. One of the Raiders coming, bouncing away in the defensive effort, Anthony Brand mistimed it. Anthony G picked up by Ferner between the legs and driven rather than lifted. 42 metres out from the Canberra line. Lockyer kicks, a couple of players offside, including Renoff. I thought he was in front of the kicker. Oh, a terrible mistake. Ken Magus, an absolutely terrible mistake. Yeah, not the kind of start that Ken Nagus was looking for. Very good kick, this one, because we have made note before this game, it's a very, very short in-goal area. And the thing about Ken Nagus on that occasion, he had plenty of time. The chasers were still 20 metres away. A couple of knock-ons there, unfortunately, just cleaned up in front of the diving Darren Smith. The dropout is not big. Andrew G takes it back for the second time in the game on the 30-metre line. Now the 12 is seven a Seaver. I think I might have called him Sailor earlier, and I can understand why. Now, it's a cross for Renoff on the left of the ground. 18 metres away from the Canberra line. 15 is Lee. Now Thorne he got through the tackle from Wolford. They're 12 out. They're looking dangerous. The Broncos, Langer, Smith, and then Carroll. State of origin hero. Pulled down on five. The cross kick is a, a definite option, but it's gone through the hands, and it's bouncing for play on. Renoff finding Hancock, who replies with a kick that's gone almost backwards. Canberra gets a touch. Nagus comes away. And that's better for Ken. The crowd give him a bit of encouragement. Daly quickly. And now Pearson. Thumped in defence by Carroll. Driving in around the thighs. Croker with 13 on his back today. So versatile, Jason. Very unlucky to miss the 94 Kangaroos. Now for Brand. Off his 40 metre line. He's two metres short of halfway. Wolford running. Wolford doing well. Picking up about nine metres. Now McFadden. Back for Daly. The skipper puts the kick in. High, lock out, no pressure. Got a bit of cover from uh, Sivan Asiva. Now, Kevin Walters angling back to the 30-metre line. And the Canberra Raiders did pretty well down on their own line to hold Brisbane out, but they will get into all sorts of trouble this afternoon if they continue to come up in a staggered line. The worst thing you can do against Brisbane is not come up in one line together. So they have too many good ball players who will take advantage of that. Philip Lee. And now Webke. Anthony Brown again going in awkwardly in defence. Will get himself hurt in a moment if he doesn't correct his timing or his head placement. Vanacolo. Just out from his own 10. Thorne, of course. He'll be looking for a big game to... Get back into that origin side. Well, that was just brilliant there from Laurie Daly. He was under all sorts of trouble, battered the ball on. Ended up picking up an extra couple of metres for his outside man. Just watch this. A bit of pressure put on him by McFadden. Pushes it on straight onto the chest of, of Nagus. Play by Ferner. Hetherington. 
And McFadden on to Daly. Daly cross kicking. Carroll looks at Lockyer. Lockyer calls him to take it away. Langer a dummy half on the 30, Brisbane's end. Lockyer through to Walters. Walters tries to get through the gap. Phil Gould is with us today. Yeah, it's just interesting there on Ray on kick reception. Wendell Saylor didn't drop back the field that kick from Laurie Daly. They sent Tony Carroll back. Saylor has had his problems with the kicks in previous week. weeks. We'll see if that uh, tactic continues during the game. They try an inside ball. Seven receiver throws a wild pass. And it's Hancock who makes the pass look better than it was. Centering play. They're just into Canberra's area. I thought the pass to Walters was forward. And Stephen Clark has got the appropriate call from the touch judge. And this will put Canberra in a reasonable field position. Nine metres on their own side of halfway. They've got the loose head and feed. Grey day in Canberra. No rain. Temperatures down. Now, an angle offered by Daly, accepted by Pearson. 42 metres off the Broncos line. Hetherington, a little pass back on the inside, under the armpit almost, to Brad. From Wolford, for McFadden to come back and across for Daly to go back to the centre for Nagus. And Nagus has put away. Tackled underneath by Andrew G over the top by Shane Webke. Now McFadden, a little pass back for Ferner. And Ferner is 28 metres out from the Brisbane line. Lovely surface provided here for the, the players today. Brisbane and Canberra. Two of the high flyers. Daly, his first chance to really pepper them. The kick is accurate. That's been battered down. It's with Canberra and Steve Clark. Is ordering the turnover. Just a couple of metres out from the Brisbane line. Yeah, Jason Croker came up with the football here. I thought it might have been called six again. I'm pretty certain that the referee put his hand up to say that it was still the last, and that's why Croker got rid of the football. Seven as even. His dad apparently played for the Fijian national side at rugby. Walters. Quick provision of the ball for Lockyer, then inside for Renoff. Renoff, oh, Wolford. Wolford left the ground and made a flying tackle. You don't see many of those these days. Now Thorne standing and offloading for Walters, who's busy. And he's cut down by Clyde, just inside the 40. Lee gives it up for G. And he's almost to the halfway mark when he's pulled down. No score. They both had... One opportunity down inside the 20 as Langer hurries a kick and it goes out on the full. Ooh, Hetherington was taken by Webke. The two number eights came together and Hetherington's head went ricocheting back. Clyde reaches the 40 metre line now. Wolford goes in, looks for his playmaker, looks for his halfback, finds McFadden, turns it back for Wolford, then back the other way again for David Ferner. A couple of times they've tried that play, and Brisbane have read it both times. McFadden now running to the line, and Darren Smith picks up this little fellow and puts him down. Another jockey-sized player that we saw down here in that magnificent win a month ago is on the bench, McClendon. Croker will play it 22 metres out from the Brisbane line. Away from Pearson, on to McFadden, on to Daly. Daly now to the air. And pressure for Lockyer. And down it comes successfully for Daly. Daly picked it up. He's got it away to Nagus. Nagus can't handle the ball. What an opportunity. Well, that is a bomb try, no shadow of a doubt. Laurie Daly did beautifully. So they had to score as Hancock forced back. Lockyer lost the football. Daly scoops it up. And really, they had to score there. Well, Ken Nagus has had anything but a bright return. Now they give it back, Brisbane. Seven receiver. Didn't protect the football. 
Ferner goes up the centre. 30 metres out from Brisbane's line. No score. Canberra bombing a try. Clyde taken by Lee and Walters. Walters had the uh, had the hand in between the legs and then let go. Hetherington. Another chance for Canberra. They've got to forget that, particularly Nagus. His confidence would be so far down. Daly to the back. Croker does the same. Nagus again with a juggle. Now they're five metres out from the corner post. Daly again pushes it on for McFadden. And he's monstered by Thorne. The fifth. What will they do? Daly's on the right. The kick. No, the hands. Ferner makes a mistake backwards. Then a deflection. It's come off Brisbane. Back to Brand. And Brand goes to ground. It wasn't played out by the Broncos, and so the turnover. Yeah, tremendous defence by Brisbane. The last three sets of six Canberra have had. You've just got to marvel at this Brisbane defensive line. They move with the flow of the ball the whole time. Surprising Laurie Daly didn't put another one up in the air there because they got a result on the previous two. Sound of the hit. From Clyde on Thorne. It's left Brad Thorne hunched over. Carroll put away just outside the 30. Steve Roach on the sideline. Well, I've got to say, I've been a little bit uh, disappointed with Stephen Clark's 10 metres so far. I would expect with these two sides, the way they throw the football around, you'd want to give them a little bit more space. He's not doing that at the moment. Darren Smith. Again, those microphones down on the sideline. I know they sometimes get criticised for what they pick up, but they can really echo the impact of the hit that these people endure many, many times in a game of rugby league. And Brad Thorne is the first man to be interchanged in this clash so far. The number 16, Dennis Scott, on for the Broncos. And there we see two further replacements in Reuben Wickey and Jason Burnham coming on for the Raiders. It is significant that uh, Thorne was taken in that tackle over there by Bradley Clyde. It was a big tackle. And he's found himself back on the bench pretty quickly. This was the tackle. And Thorne was left hunched over. And out went the hook and they got him off. Daly. The two is McNamara. And uh, a knock-on's been called, so the scrum will give Brisbane a great opportunity. See the pass being thrown out the back, a definite knock on there. Number 17, Ruben Wickey, is actually playing at lock forward for the Raiders. Nomeninga trying to get him more involved as Langer wins the scrum, finds Darren Lockyer. Lockyer taken by Magus. Right on the 10-metre line on the first play. Champion. Langer, Walters. Walters tries to fend, gets a pass away. Gee, there must be a question mark on it. No, he's given the try. Andrew G gets the try. But from up here, I thought the pass looked very suspect. Well, let's just try and have a look at it. Take nothing away from the work done by Kevin Walters. He slides through the outside man, moving up too quickly. Pass back inside was a line ball one. Laurie Daly, no doubt in his mind that it went forward. But you'll see here, Brandon Pearson, the number three, going up a little bit too quickly, only concerned with his men. You've really got to know where the football is and what's going on with it. Although Walters had enough strength to hold off his own defender. And Andrew G doesn't get many, but he was in good position to take advantage of Kevin Walters. Good work there. You can actually just hear what's going on between the referee and the players out there and the referee Stephen Clark saying, no, it looked OK to me. And of course, the video replay cannot judge on forward passes. So Andrew G gets his eighth career try. Off of Kevin Walters. Pass. And uh, as Peter pointed out, Walters did everything he had to do. Even if there was a question on the on the final pass. The two points has been added by Lockyer. So it's a converted try to Brisbane. 6-0 after 14 minutes. Canberra 
taking off twice in a row. The sailor is Hill, back on his own 20 metre line. Leah Dummy Hart. 16 for the Broncos is Dennis Scott playing in a headgear. Walters cuts out G. Then for Lockyer for Renoff, then Hancock coming in. And oh gee, there's some awful defense there. People snatching and grabbing at him. And Lee eventually is held by the two fellows that were beaten by Hancock, Clyde and Ferner. Darren Smith joining in. Carroll backing into a tackle. To the halfway line they come. Langer off the ground. Campion. And it's a penalty against Canberra. He's calling a player over. Come out here. It's Wolford. Oh, just a quick one. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. What it is, the problem is, if he's going to be the second marker, he's got to be right up. He was caught in no man's land right in the middle. He's either going to be back 10 or right up behind him. He was standing back here in between. That's the problem. The so he ruled that Simon yeah. Wolford was in no man's land. You're either second marker, which means you're immediately and directly in front of the man playing the ball and your own dummy half. Or you're back 10 metres, take your pick, but you can't be five. Yeah, game, but I'm not quite sure what those penalties are given, really. Like, he was nowhere near being involved in the play, and, and Kevin Campion made a good run of 10, 12 metres. I know it gives him another set of six, but I think it's an unnecessary stoppage on that occasion. Langer, Walters looking, Webke on the inside, it was rehearsed, and Webke was a little bit late in arriving, he's lost it, and he's given the penalty. I, I, I didn't see two in the tackle. Maybe there was, or maybe there were, but I just fancied that the tackle had been completed and then he has stolen the ball. Let's watch it. Yeah, there are two in the tackle. My apologies. Very much so. The referee's got that one right. David Furness stripped the football. There were two involved. He tried to make it look as though it had just come loose, but there's no doubt he definitely played at it. And then the decision made by Brisbane to take the two points, which is the right one. It gets them further than a converted try in front, but the Broncos, you're never quite sure, are you? Almost half expecting the quick tap and another set of six. Well, it's a strange game, isn't it, Phil? I mean, it could have been 6-0 Canberra up the other end of the park, and Brisbane would have been still striving to get on the board. Yeah, that's football, isn't it? Lock out with a game, with a, uh, a kick. Of about the same proportions as the one at the end of the State of Origin, he takes them to a lead of 8-0. Yeah, I'm still not entirely happy with that stripping rule, you know, taking the ball off an opposing player. There has to be more onus and responsibility placed on the player in possession to keep hold of the ball, and I think there are too many soft penalties in this game for players who are losing the ball in possession. Canberra restarting again. And again, Sailor restarts for the Broncos. 15 away from his own line for Philip Lee, using Brad Ford, running into the shoulder of Ruben Wickey. As Peter pointed out, he's playing at lock forward. They're crossing the 20-metre line. And this is Scott. Brisbane, of course, play Parramatta next Sunday. Following their State of Origin match on Friday night, they back up against the Eels at, uh, at ANZ. And that will be our television game, of course. Going on north of the border as the Broncos on the last tackle, 42 out from their own line. Lockyer on the short side. Has to beat one tackle, can't do so. Some great pressure put on there, and the Raiders come up with the ball. Oh! And Ferner tries to promote something quickly. Now he's given a penalty to Canberra. They're saying that the Brisbane players were never onside. And that the man who Caught the football thrown by David Ferner came from an offside position. An offside position from where? I don't know that he was referring to Alan Langer, by the way. I, I just... Was he? I'm told that he was referring to Langer. But there was no kick, was there? Daly. Oh, Vegas has put it down again. I know that was a bit difficult to take, but he's at senior level, and I know he's having his first match back at all of that. But uh, that's at least the third time he's been in error. It's 
So here's Canberra with the chance now. 28 metres out from the Brisbane line. 14 trying to get into the scrum is Luke Prittis. Brisbane coming away with it. Carroll ran straight through the tackle of David Boyle. It was eventually pulled down by Pearson. Darren Smith and they go down a wide blind side with Campion. Scott. Just on the Brisbane side of halfway, they enjoy a lead of eight points to nil. Kevin Walters pushing it wide. Good hands by Carroll. Sailor goes back in and gets away. Sailor's got the defence coming at him. The corner's getting closer. He's over. Wendell Sailor scores Brisbane's second try. And it brings a smile to the face of Gordon Tallis. Yes, and why not? Brings a smile to not only Brisbane Broncos supporters, but rugby league enthusiasts in general because this is just super play from Wendell Saylor. He beats one of the best defenders in the game in Laurie Daly. Comes back inside, puts the step on. Laurie dipped the head. And Wendell Saylor backed his own ability. Ken Nagus has got plenty of speed, but he couldn't match it with Wendell. I think the best broken field runner in the game. Although we haven't seen a lot of it this season, I must admit. Not as much as what I expected we would see. But gee, when it happens, it is, it is normally breathtaking. Well, the two great things we saw from him here was the fact he came back on the inside and immediately broke to the outside. That fooled Laurie Daly. And then never at any stage did he look inside. He trusted his pace. Nagus was coming across. He's no slouch. In the end, he beat him quite comfortably. I guess the short in coals uh, prevented him from running it around underneath the post. Just a great move put on Daly, wasn't it? You could see Laurie put the head down to go in and make the tackle. And in that split second... Wendell has he's got the step and the, the swerve going and into space. I must admit to you though, and it sounds like it's pick on Ken Nagus day. But I, I thought he had plenty of time to get across and make a better effort than he did. Without trying to take anything away from the try by Wendell Saylor, it was a ripper. Lock here now from near the sideline. It's got the length and the direction for another two. 14 to nil, and Canberra bombed a try that should have seen them in front. 6-0. It's 14-0 the other way. And a very big welcome to our viewers in New Zealand. Viewers through Sky and the land of the long white cloud watching us today. And always nice to have you with us. Particularly in Waitangaroo. And Mungatautri. Love the people down there. You backed him one day, Phil Mungatautri. I know that there must have been a trifecta or something. This is the part of Brisbane's game that's really improved over the years. The ability to, to ruck the ball forward and make good yards, get in good position uh, for the kicking game. Getting out of trouble seems to be very simple now for the Brisbane Broncos. It's a fairly imposing, like physically imposing pack, but isn't it? Even this youngster, Sivan Siva, as Langer. It's a good kick down. No great urgency again from Kenny Nagus here, but fortunately for him, the ball going over the dead ball line. We'll have a 20 metre restart. He was here when they marked the ground, Kenny. <laughs> but Sivan Siva, Brad Thorne, Talis when he's in the side, Andrew G, got plenty of bulk about him. Shane Webke, they've got very, very good go forward men who are very difficult to, to tackle just because of their physical dimensions. Steve Roach on the sidelines. Yeah, I'd just like to add to that. I think it's they do a lot of tip-offs, a lot of one-pass runner all the time when they're coming out of their own den. So there's players in motion all the time. They know how to play well together. Everyone knows about physical dimensions, Rab. It's our blocky on the sideline. That's right. Bran. It'll be interesting to get Phil Gould's comments at the end of this game or nearing completion. He went on record on Saturday morning as saying that's the best team we've played this year by a long way. And of course his team beat Brisbane. But Brisbane. Nagus coming off. Brisbane by 14 to nothing here. That's Canberra right. on the attack. A kick that was kept low and Lockie is there. McFadden, the number seven, making the tackle. Good work by him. He was the kicker. Hancock. Michael gets a pass away, and Canberra have got it. Played by Jason Burnham. Ruben Wickey 
Ricky within three metres. Now from the 14, Prittis, taken by Hetherington. Flops it out the back for Ferner. Reflexes by Ferner, good. McFadden, ooh, the tackle by Thorne. You can hardly blame him for being a bit high. Daly, Daly decides to take them on. Three metres from the line. Five tackles, bad play the ball by Daly. Prittis tries to put a kick in. Champion. That was a very poor set of six by Canberra. They had numbers out wide. The ball didn't get there. A couple of players took the defence on, and there was a lot of defence there to take on two and three. A bad play of the ball from Laurie at the end, and the kick just was a nothing kick, gave possession away. Poor execution. I think from the first 15 minutes we've seen, Peter, that Canberra are going to have to resort to a little bit of kicking early in the tackle camp down the opposition quarter just to try and break this Brisbane defence up. It's very solid. Well, we've just given a wrap to Queensland, or the Brisbane side, sorry, coming out of their own danger area. Just giving the football away again with a bad pass. A penalty coming Canberra's way here for a high shot. Yeah, it's from Langer. There's nothing in it. He, 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 he hung the arm out and then he tried to pull it away, but it was all too late. And the referee has treated it with exactly the amount of uh, respect that it deserved. Just simply giving the penalty and basically saying, you know what it's for. And Langley getting out of there as quick as he got in there. This may be better from Canberra. It's a set play situation, something they may have been able to rehearse. Off the kick receptions, they really, or the turnovers, they really haven't come in with anything constructive that's worried the Brisbane defence. Burnham, or Brown it is. Going to need to be the next team to score as Daly runs across, linking up with Ferner. And he's been able to slide the pass. Played by McFadden. Daly. Pearson trailing through on the inside. They're chancing a lot of inside balls. Now the run around. Hetherington. Two metres from the line. Prittis looking for a caller. Daly. Eight metres from the line. Again, they go with Ferner. Wolford. And again to Daly. And it's been uh, picked up by Rinoff. Brisbane basically uh, just being attracted to Laurie Daly. Wherever he goes, they follow him. Yeah, that's where really McFadden and the fullback McClendon have got to come up and be a receiver on the other side and take some pressure off Daly. Very clever work there from Kevin Walters to put his foot out deliberately, stop the kick from going through. A pretty easy pick up for his side. I think we highlighted that earlier in the season. When Laurie Daly's out there, McClendon and these fellas don't get quite as involved as what they normally would. When he goes, they tend to get their hands on the football a lot more and be more adventurous. Here's Langer. Going straight to Renoff and Renoff losing the ball. So Brisbane's handling has become quite haphazard. Very slowly up to Steve Renoff. To throw in that pass, beautiful pass here from Petro Sivanasiva. Three men hanging on to him. He still found Alan, still found Alan Langer. Wayne Bennett won't be happy, happy with this pass from Steve Renoff because a couple of similar passes went to ground at the other end of the field and put them under all sorts of pressure. I will teach you to use the Christian name as well as the surname on Sivanasiva. You choked. And strangled the next word that yeah, came out. I had a gave up, didn't I? You did. You, you were a gamer man than me. But he just said Petro. <clears throat> I don't know why he didn't, but anyway, he fell at the next jump. Now, the little fullback, McClendon, offloading for Pearson. They're doing a lot of this switching play into the other direction. Back on the inside. Brand. Playing front row, and that's. A big assignment, Hetherington's the other, so they're both relative newcomers to the profession in the top grade. It used to be Lomax and Pongia. Now, McFadden, Daly, Hetherington, Daly, and David Boyle. Boyle brought down by Renoff and Hancock. Vanacolo, back for McFadden, McClendon, Clyde, cutting out. And picking up Bran out wide. He's on the 10-metre line. The ball down for McNamara. On the bounce for McClendon. Over the head for Croker. Steps off the right foot. One to beat. He'll make it. Croker's in. 
Well, that's the best passage of play you've seen from Canberra in keeping the football alive and putting pressure on. And the end, Jason Faker, the man for all seasons, comes up with the try. Good passing here. I don't know whether Brand is the, the guy that you want to be finding outside centre in one of these attacking moves, but he kept the ball alive back to his winger, McNamara. Pops it back to the two. Pass goes across again from the, 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 the fullback this time, McClendon. And as we freeze it there, you can see Philip Lee is going across. Seven receiver, this man is a little bit slow in coming, and as play continues, Croker straightens up. Beat Lee. And I know that that was almost in stop, impossible to stop the try scorer, but Darren Lockyer, he does have a few problems in these sort of situations with men coming at, a, at his own line. On this occasion, he wasn't able to stop the try scorer. Good work from Canberra just on the last, keeping it alive. Not a, not a pretty sight coming at you, though, when you're just a couple of metres off your own line. The kick for conversion is successful from Brandon Pearson. And I made the comment, I suppose it was pretty obvious, they had to be the team to score next. 14 to 6 Brisbane after half an hour. And Lockyer back. Building his mound for the restart. Ben Walker has gone on. Philip Lee has come off. And Walker is no slouch. He's the heir apparent. I suppose that's the right way to describe him to uh, Alan Langer. But there's uh, heavy thought or heavy discussion that Paul Green will finish up getting the job. Hetherington. The crowd very demonstrative once again. You know, Alan Langer, high tackle. Brandon Pearson was the man this time. If we saw no reason to pull play up, and the Canberra Raiders have done pretty well on this set of six. Wolford finds now, his fullback. McClendon, he's inside the 30 metres, looks for support. It came off a Bronco and came back to him. It's six more tackles. I don't know that they all know that. Wolford, on it goes to Brian. Brian is tackled two metres from the line. Burnham. Oh, it's gone backwards, said the referee. Wolford pass through McFadden, then for Daly. Held on the 10, and he'll get a penalty. It might even be the bin. No, I thought he was thinking about the bin, but it's a penalty. Now, I'm just wondering whether they would have would think two points here, but David Fern is actually off the field. And Daly decides to find touch. All of a sudden, Canberra coming to life. Clyde. They need Clyde to stand right up today. They're coming off the back mark. Hetherington. And that might have come off a Brisbane player, but the referee has ordered a knock on there in that final analysis. Just wonder whether he threw the ball back and it actually hit his leg or his boot and went forward. He tries to offload here, goes back, and comes off his boot. That should have been play on. I think oh, I that think, knock on there. No, that's what I'm, I'm saying to you. In the final analysis, there's a little knock on here, but that's not a knock on. You're quite right. And I thought it came off a Brisbane player for a second, and he's found something wrong in there. That last little piece of play. Thorn. Well. Twice now, they've been down there, and when they look at the video of this, they'll say, well, we should have scored twice at least more than we have. 33rd minute, eight points the margin. It's a nice kick. It's weighted so much so that it's just gone over the dead ball line, but you, you've got to remember he's kicked off his own 25-metre point given it just an ounce too much if in fact he did that well, it was only a yard over the dead ball line rain of course they've been shortened to six meters today i'm sure if ricky stewart was playing that would have been about 11 10 or 11 
But, uh, well, one that's way... right. He's taken, he's taken a nine iron. He should have only used a wedge. That's one way to put it, I guess. No doubt they've shortened the in goals to combat Alan Langer's short kicking game. They might have heard about him, do you think? Well, I'm sure they have. I don't think it's in the right spirit of the game to shorten the field to combat an opposition tactic. But, uh, oh. Nice shot on Croker. Yeah, Andrew G is the man. Fortunately, Jason Croker getting to his feet. Yes, we will call out the good front row. I know where you got him, but it's going on report, all right? Going on report, Andrew G. So, Andrew G on report. Let's have a look at it again. Doesn't look pretty. It'll be a few sleepless nights there for Andrew G. And it's something like that that just could get your mind thinking towards State of Origin next week. And gee whiz, if I cost myself a place in the big game, get your mind off today's job. Canberra now with another opportunity. And fat daily, daily, firmer, firmer. Ten metres out from the line. Daly calling the forwards up to take one more. That's Bran. He's not all that fast, but he's he's doing some good things. Back on the blind for Daly. Pass back for Walters. The Canberra doing a lot of stepping back on the inside, of course, when they play here at night, as we see a penalty now to Brisbane. When you play here in the evening and the ground is slippery, that's a great tactic. No doubt they brought those tactics here today, expecting it to be a little difficult for Brisbane, but... The penalty was there on Simon. That's twice I spoke to him. I spoke to you over there earlier. He's either got to be up there or he's back with me. He can't stand in the yeah, middle. That's okay? You threw that ball, and that's why. That's why. You were trying to unload the ball back. Right. Daly's concerned about the referee's interpretation of Wolford again. The referee and what Simon Wilford believe is the right distance to stand if you're the second marker. Thorn. Oh, gee, that was a big hit. Ferner driving in over the top of Wiki's tackle. Andrew G taken underneath by Clyde, over the top by Wilford. They cross the halfway with Sip and Asiba, and Clyde contributes to three tackles in a row. Langer, Walters, then for Thorne out wide. Lockyer into the back line. And pushing away from David Boyle. Boyle coming again to make the tackle. 30 metre line, Lee with a dummy. Then a flick pass out the back for Walker. Walker's held there by McFadden. And also in there making a contribution was Prittis. Lockyer, away from... Philip Lee back for Michael Hancock. And then Lee is back there for it again. Inside for Walters, outside for Langer. And then knocked down by, I thought by Canberra, but he, yes, he has. He's restarted the tackle count. Darren Smith heading for the corner. So is Carroll. So is Saylor, but Saylor drops it. Gee, they had them. They, they had them. They did, and if they didn't score on that. Ruck, they still had another five up their sleeve because Brandon Pearson got a hand on that football. Aaron Smith finds Tony Carroll on the outside, who stays on the outside. Wendell had every right to catch that one despite the attention of Brandon Pearson. So half time, two and a half minutes away. This is McClendon. Brand. Salo and Sibita Siva making the tackle jointly. As Canberra get a penalty. Well, three penalties and three drop balls by Brisbane have certainly brought Canberra back into this football game, haven't they? Seems like an age since Brisbane were on the attack, other than that last set of six, and Canberra have had the luxury of a lot of possession. Brand 
right on the halfway line. Close to half time. Ferner sliding a pass for Boyer. Under two minutes to the break. McClendon pushing it out for Daly. Daly back for Clyde. Clyde for Nagus. And then a lovely tackle by Langer. 38 metres off the line. Misdirected the pass. Bran is there. Ferner. But Clyde with him. Looking for the regather, but it's come down to Sailor. And Brisbane should be able to run the six tackles out. That will take them to the break with an eight-point margin. What a bad effort there from David Ferner. In fact, if Wendell Sailor hadn't had timed the pickup the way that he did, Ferner could have regathered that one. You wouldn't expect anything too fancy now from Brisbane. Well, they do flick the ball out the back to Ben Walker. Fourth tackle, couple to go, and then we'll see Lockyer get it to the other end of the field. Wide ball, finding Renoff. Ran over the top of McClendon, but he's taken it into touch. And this is going to soak up plenty of time as we wait for the scrum, but... Siren sounding, Renoff into touch, and the scrum doesn't get a chance to pack it. So at half-time, as Laurie Daly is in close consultation with the referee, we leave you with Brisbane, 14 points to six up. Eight points to margin. Broncos leading and running right to left now. We'll go down to Steve Roach in just a moment to see what he's been able to extract from the coaches, from the rival camps. Brandon Pearson, the first of the Canberra players, tackled in the second half. Daly almost knocking on. Hetherington, I thought we might have seen the last knock on of his career last Friday night from Daly. We may have. Ferner angling across for Clyde, who lifted, I thought, his, his personal input in the latter part of the first half. Hetherington. Played by injuries early on, Brad, he's a big man. He was just starting to hit form when he ran into injury again. And he picked up a bit of a problem in that last tackle as well as Daly puts it over the head of Sailor. All comes back in field, so Lockyer has to play at it in his own in-goal area. He should have the speed to get out. I oh, think he's grasped in goal, he oh, has. Great tackle, great chase from Pearson. No, well really, Ricky. Ricky gets my vote for the main... The main tackle, Pearson, though, he was there in support like a faithful servant. Yeah, you are right. It is Ruben Wiki that comes up with the, the initial tackle. Well, they both got up and embraced. So Lockyer he gets a, a spiralling kick off from under the uh, goal mouth. But it's really set Canberra up for a good chance early in the second half. Hetherington on the second play. 20 metre line, centre of the ground. McClendon, Grant, full tap. 12 to go. Wolford, Hetherington, inside for Ferner. Fourth tackle with seven to go. Wolford, down on five. Away from Boyle to McClendon and then flick passes. Wolford couldn't get hold of it. And Philip Lee dives on it for Brisbane. That was close. Yeah, well, as they did in the first half, Canberra, four of the plays in that set of six were turned or stepped back on the inside, trying to catch the Brisbane players on this slippery surface. Not as bad as it usually is, but they're still finding little inroads there. Let's go down to Steve. He's back from the dressing rooms. Well, Mal Meninga won't be happy with that. Exactly what he was saying at half-time. Be patient when we get down there. Around. He said, don't force the pass. Exactly what they did the first time that they have the football in the second half. He said, one-on-one -on -one defence is very important. He said, we've practised it all week. It's letting us down a little bit when we're tired. He said, concentrate on that. He said, we've had some success with the high ball. Let's keep going to the air. Don't worry about the grabber kick for Brisbane. Uh, Wayne Bennett was wrapped in their scramble defence because they didn't have that much ball. He said he was a bit worried about the drop-off in the last 15 minutes in the first half. He wants his team to concentrate a little bit better. He said, don't run the off in the second half. Concentrate on the job at hand. Darren Lockyer sends it down to Ken Magus. Crowd gives Ken a roar of approval. 
That's the way to do it. Good man. Now Vanacola taken around the scruff of the neck by Thorne. 30 metre line, Canberra's in. And some half time scores coming up. With a, a full time score, Melbourne over Gold Coast. 62 to 6. Canterbury 6 2 at half time. South 12 4 at half time. West 24 10 at half time. That's the way those matches were. Daly. Punching it down into the corner and it just lollies across the side. So back for the start, 10 metres away from the Broncos line, 14 to 6. Well, they've only put the three bombs up in this game, uh, Canberra, and they got two results. They got a force ball out of Wendell Saylor and then one out of Darren Lockyer. I can't understand the tactic there of pushing that down into the corner and over the touch line. Much preferred to try and get a repeat set out of the high ball. Clinton, I notice, is playing half back in this start of the second half. I don't think I've ever broadcast two more similar looking players with headgear than McClendon and McFadden, other than the Dawson twins many years ago. Yeah, they looked alike, the Dawson twins. Well, they were identical. My God, I'm, I'm, I'd love to know who got you the HSC. Must have cheated. Now, Walters. It's a revelation. The Dawson twins look alike. Nagus. And Vanicolo. Clyde. Everington out to the field. Wolford. Oh, he's lost it. One on one, no problem. Lee. Thorn again. Seven to Seaver. Brisbane Turner need a bit of a kick. Sorry, Brisbane need a bit of a kick start here. They really have been starved of possession the last 25 minutes of this contest. And They've sort of been lulled into just a defensive role and not playing anything like the football they would like to like to play is Langer now. Oh, gee, Walters. Picked off by Hetherington. It was a great shot. Lockyer turning it in for, for Thorne. Ferner drives him. Hetherington was there still. 20 metre line. And here's the danger man. Darren Smith taken by Laurie Daly in a ball and all tackle. Lockyer, sending Sailor after it, Naker stands his ground. Hearts in the mouth job there. Vanacola, good yards made by Canberra, Wolford. Crossing the half, Ray Mark. It was a tremendous run by the young winger, but also marvellous play the ball. Good, quick one. Daly. Pearson. Pearson. Carroll picks it up for Brisbane. Ray had a chance there, Canberra. He's been very good this afternoon, Brandon Pearson. He's put a lot of pressure on the defence of Brisbane. A lot of times he's come back in field for the reverse pass, and even though it's been read by Brisbane, he's still proven a handful to stop as Walters gets the kick in. All the chase, I think, are on side. Hancock. Gets... Brisbane's leading oh. the race. They're not now. Benicolo. It's come from behind Hancock to save it. Magus. Ooh, Hancock. I thought he would arrive a mile in front. Watch this on the wide shot. The ball and Hancock. And then Vanacolo got the better of the bounce. Here's Canberra's making another break. Daly's in the space. Now it's McClendon. McClendon's chased by Sailor. He flick passes to Wolford. Wolford, Wolford, he's made it. Simon 
Wolford. He had the little legs going like a Morris fighter. Darren Smith couldn't get in. And Wolford, who's been the star in the second half, gets it over the line. Well, wow, that's just a great try. Laurie Daly, firstly a brilliant take one-handed. Turns it back inside to McClendon. All the players involved here, good speed. The hooker, Wolford, I'm sure he used to be an inside back. It's out of the clutches of the chaser. I think it was Darren Smith at the end there, was it? Yeah. But a length of the field try there, started originally by a marvellous take from Laurie Daly. And then he got into the clear. McClendon took the inside pass. And the flick pass from him was a good one as well. Taken very nicely by Wolford. And he pinned the ears. He has a look at, at Lockyer coming across. Skips out of the tackle of Darren Smith close to the line. And this game, after the first 15 minutes, has turned a circle. It certainly has. They're in a hole at the moment, Brisbane. We intimated that just before Kevin Walters tried to pull a rabbit out of his hat with the long kick on tackle two. They didn't get a good bounce. And from the first play, Laurie Daly has heard him at the other end of the field. This is right in front for David. And the flags are in the air. The crowd loves it. Great try by Canberra. They're back in it. Two points behind. Sides, of course, that you, you, you can't relax on them, doesn't matter where. Lockyer tosses into the next session, and Ken Nagus carries it back to the 20. Not only did Wolford score the try on the other side of the break, he'd been making some little darts out from dummy half. Very good tactics against big forwards as the match wears on. Ruben Wicky near the halfway on two. Clyde on three. That is the halfway. Now, McClendon. And look at him. There he goes again. The support of Ryan Daly. He, oh, it was Croker. And it's gone forward. Well, this little fellow McClendon, he's doing the job now. Still the problem, stepping back on the inside. That's where Laurie Daly went on the previous play. Gets the defence moving one way and then straightens up. And they're a little interchange of passing around the rucks, had them nap him again. It's very hard to change direction in defence on this surface. And Canberra, that's why they've got such a great record here. They can play on that with those inside passes. Canberra were looking to put a big push on that scrum. And... Uh, now there's been a little bit of a dust up between the two front rowers, Bran and G. I don't want this. It was going to start a something. Like start a drama. I don't want you. Right? Wayne Bennett has made a lot of changes in the last minute or two. Four replacements in as many minutes. They win the scrum. Kevin Walters gives it to Tony Cowley. He had a good head of steam up. A strong tackle lay from Daly over the top. Pearson. Michael Devere, wearing jumper 17. Wendell Saylor, Walker, lofted pass. Walters, cut down by Croker, just outside the Brisbane 40 metre line. Andrew G. To the halfway. Well, he does add some starts to the defence, doesn't he, Ruben Wicky? He can get his work rate up to the forwards. There's a little chip Langer with a chip and a right. chase and a regather. Then he gives it away for Lockyer. Lockyer's pulled down. 27 metres away from the Canberra line. Walker for Langer again. Langer gets it on. It's with Michael Devere. And he's tackled 10 metres out. And that's the turnover. I was just about to say that Alan Langer had been quiet in this game, but evidence there in two plays exactly that you can't take your mind off him. He's still there. Just like a simmering volcano, he can come good at any time. This was it. He was out at second receiver. The kick was perfect. And it was a lovely tackle. Eventually to save the day. Not the first one from Vanicolo or from Nagus. 
but the second it was from Vanicola. Pearson. 32 metres off from his own line. Not 30 for the Raiders as Daly goes wide on to Croker. Ken Nagus limping from the field. Mistake made by the Raiders. Nagus had his left knee strapped, as you can see, and that's what he's been holding on the journey off. Fadden coming back into the action. So too Brad Thorne. There at first receiver. They opened them up a couple of times. Burnham. 20 metre line, centre, centre of the ground, Daly, then for Firma, nothing flash, Firma behind him, Boyle, McFadden to the ground, on the bounce for Burnham, 17 is Ricky, a dummy taken to ground, 12 metres out on five, Wolford, Daly, Daly, rubber kick, Carroll knocks on, that's what they were looking for, that's what they wanted, Carroll saying, what are you talking about, a knock-on? I tell you what, I think Clark got it right. Yeah, I don't think they were his exact words, right? <laughs> but that's in essence what he's saying. And even though he's diving backward, you can see the ball was actually propelled at the other goal line, other try line. Mm. Yeah, it, it gets everybody sooner or later. How can it be a knock on when I'm facing when I'm facing the wrong way? It's got nothing to do with it. No, it hasn't. And Laurie Daly coming to life there too. Handled four times in that particular set of six. Great flights coming off. Um, Heverington's going back with Prittis. What's the story on Nagus uh, block? Yeah, they're desperate to get him back on. They're just restrapping that knee at the moment. So you will see Kenny Nagus again. That's the knee that he did on the bus trip, isn't it? Now, Canberra! McFadden, quick play the ball, Prittis. Forced back by the Broncos, close to the line. Pearson, McFadden, Ferner diving forward to take the catch. Bad pass has crossed from ground. Croker, Hetherington. 11 away, Prittis. Burnham Daly. Oh, Pearson! Pearson flying onto the ball and puts it over. Pearson scores for Canberra. Well, he hit that ball so hard. And Daly gave it to him at exactly the right time. Now, I'd made mention that Brandon Pearson has been very, very strong. As the ball goes to Laurie Daly, and he frees it there. You can see the try score actually coming back on the angle, and that makes it difficult for these defenders. Normally the play continues go, going across, but the angle of the run was just way too good. Sivina Siva tried to come up with the tackle down below, and you can see the outside defender. He stays out. It's Tony Carroll. He's completely bamboozled by the, the great running of Brandon Pearson. You had a, a bit of time with Brandon Pearson, Phil. He's certainly having a big one today. That's his favourite run. Harden straight either on the inside or the short ball. Laurie Daly did beautifully there. He ran right to Alan Langer so that Alan Langer couldn't leave him. And Tony Carroll was had his attention taken by some sweeping attackers around the back of the play. Just overread the play. Expected a second man. And that's Brendan Pearson's best run. Short and hard. 20 metres out. 10 in. For David Firth. Got it. Got it well. No problem. Touch judges don't move. Canberra, 18. Brisbane, 14. <laughs> Brisbane's Darren Lockyer. Sending it down for the try scorer Pearson to come back. Well, Phil, was just, Phil was just talking to me during the break. Runaway leaders early in matches this weekend. They must have caught the same disease. I was just about to say, I don't want to get too carried away, but Brisbane leading by 14 points to nil. It's a little bit akin to, say, Penrith leading 26 nil. You certainly wouldn't expect them to be run down and passed. 
I know there's a long way to go, but the momentum is all with the home side at the moment. Here's Burnham taking it inside Brisbane Territory. North led 12-0. Um, it's been a weekend where the front runners aren't, are just aren't getting the journey. Didn't seem to worry Newcastle. Masters of Origin, of course, $40,000 in merchandise to be won by somebody from New South Wales, somebody from Queensland. <coughs> Pardon me. Details tomorrow and Friday in the Daily Telegraph and Courier Mail, respectively, in Sydney and in Brisbane. And then, of course, we will draw the winners and uh, they'll be announced on the night of State of Origin 3. And, of course, on that night, we parade the Masters of Origin. Marvellous prize. 26 Masters of Origin. You've got to pick the best from each. As I said, all the details in the telly in Sydney, the Courier Mail in Brisbane tomorrow. To the 40-metre line for Brad Thorne. Who looks at the referee as if to say, you didn't see that, boss, eh? And now, Clark. Jason Burnham here, a high shot on Shane Webke will be penalised. That should be sufficient. It was late in the tackle count too, Peter. This just might be the spark that Brisbane are looking for. It's their first repeat set of six for I don't know how long. Although not a very good kick by Lockyer there. And Langer hasn't had much time with the ball in his hands. They last met in July of last year here at Bruce. And here's Webke getting away from a couple of drop-off tackles. Made it to the 10-metre line. Now they've got to watch Langer. Walters looking on the inside for Darren Smith. Something went wrong, though. It didn't have the precision of a Broncos play. Langer again. Four. Down on the 10. Walker. Langer. Walters. Renoff. Five tackles. Champion. A champion. Walters. Now, which way will he rule? Advantage Campbell. Their yeah, play on their champion. He's a champion. And here they are. The Raiders getting away from their their 20 metre zone again with Vatacolo. A mistake. And Hetherington's finished up with it, but the referee was ordered to knock on. And I think you'll find that's the one that he's ordered. He's the deflection forward off Hetherington the first time. He's had to go back to that, apparently. Even though the Broncos came in contact with it. So, a good chance here for Brisbane. From the scrum. Now, Walters. Carroll's made this possible. Walters is 15 metres away from the line. From Walker. Oh, he's just been bombarded by the marker, McNamara. Walton, Langer, Lockyer, Lee, through from Campion, behind Renault. Oh, a shuffle of a pass. McFadden picked it up. Clyde runs. Steve Roach made the comment early in the game that he thought the, the 10 metre kept by the referee was fairly poor. I agree. 60 minutes later, I, I really don't think that the, the 10 metres has been good enough in this game. Although it's got nothing to do with this drop ball. Kevin Campion just threw it straight behind Steve Renoff. And Canberra showing tremendous eagerness to get on the loose balls. They've been on all of them so far. That kick is perfect. Just landing inside the corner post there. And 14,728. And crowd figures, you watch that replay. Perfect kick. It just seems to me today that Brisbane 
are not playing in their normal fashion. Langer hasn't had much of the ball in his hands at all. We've said that before, but when he does have it, he doesn't go into the line with it as he normally does with good support runners inside and out. So they they believe they can get around this Canberra side. As both Peter and Steve Roach have said, they're standing up out wide inside the 10 metres. They really aren't offering any gaps out there. Hancock held by Daly. Nagus in to help his captain, Steve Roach, on the sideline. Yeah, that's good experience shown there by Laurie Daly to kick the ball deep in there into uh, Brisbane's heart. That's the idea, too. Get in front of the scoreboard and make Brisbane play off their own line, try and force mistakes. Thorne has reached the 30-metre line. G, short ball across for Lee, back to G. Then from Golders, out to Lockyer, inside to Salem. Got away from Clyde. Stepped inside Hedrington, takes on Prittis, offloads in the tackle. Walters pushes, Langer on. Then it's with Campion, and he will play the ball six metres on his own side of halfway. Darren Smith runs it down the blind side. Lee's pass goes to ground, picked up by Walker, given to G, then Sailor. Sailor is held by three Canberra players and put away. 18-14, 65th minute. Lockyer calling it to the right. Then through Lee. Was there a deflection? Yes, I think there was. No, it's a turnover. I thought just looking at the Brisbane players that uh, there had been a touch. No, it was just another misdirected pass, and by the reaction of them, no great urgency to try and get back there and fix up the problem, fix up the mistake. Well, their fifth tackle options today have been terrible. I mean, they've, they've tried to run the ball more than kick it. And they're such a dangerous kicking side with Alan Langer and Lockyer in the team. Prittis. I guess most of us thought that Langer would pick up where he left off with the grubber, but it hasn't been used. Daly not held. And you can pass off the ground in that situation. Prittis. Well, Prittis was a flash pass that really wasn't necessary. Burnham was entitled to catch it, nevertheless. Sometimes these flash passes, they might look lovely, but... I don't know that that was necessary. If we like to and Burnham, he knows he should have caught it anyway. Next Friday night, of course, we go to Suncorp Stadium for what will be one of the great games of rugby league, I'm sure, of all time. State of Origin 2 live at 7.30 next Friday. And we stay in Brisbane then for the big one at uh, AMZ on the Sunday between Brisbane and Paramount. They'll go to there, of course, at four o'clock on Sunday. Carroll trying to fend off. Half succeeded. And he's hurt Carroll. Four. He was actually hurt not so long ago. Remember when he put on the, the back line move and he went in and the run around, taking something up on the far side? He stayed down hurt after that for a little while. He still hasn't quite recovered. There's a probing run there. Takes play to centre field, 35 out, Langer calls it to the left. Turns it inside, Walters through, and then Lee on the Lockyer, Lockyer to Carroll, Carroll to Sailor. Go, go. Back for Carroll behind him. And he did well to stay on the field of play, but the ball's gone forward anyway. And the referee called a knock on on Tony Carroll. Yeah, that's what he called. So he's got Carroll for the same thing twice, and both times Tony has got up and said, what are you talking about? He's not a happy man. this happened. Laurie Daly, I think, has left the field on the far side. Both Pearson and Fern are coming back on. I think it's Daly who's gone off. Yeah, you're right, Peter. When I say rare, I mean, time's running out now. 13 minutes to go. He has had a lot of football lately, and as we pointed out, he's having a few problems with his knees, but at this stage of the game, we'd think that he'd be very, very tough to get off the football field. Well, it's an unbelievable decision. You can only think that he's injured. And doesn't feel he can go on himself. Nagus tackled on the 40 metre line. It's his own end of the ground. 
That is Bren. Now Vanicolo. Refuses to run round. Attracted three defenders. He's that sort of player. McFadden linking up with Croker. Now they're on Brisbane's 40 metre line. McFadden again. Sailor turned around, sent back to the end goal. And back to the 20 for the restart. Four points to margin. 12 minutes to go. Canberra failed at the break. 14 to 6. Well, they haven't looked like scoring a point since the 15th minute of the game. You can't imagine that we're going to see 65 minutes of football without Brisbane scoring some points. They're only four behind, even though they're not playing well. I just somehow think Canberra have got to score again to win this game. Langer. Long ball. Walters into Lockyer. Lockyer out to Renner. Renner! He's away! Down the sideline! Are they going to get him? The pass is OK! It's play on! And Brisbane's Kevin Walters has tackled. No, it's not. It was Hancock. And Renner plunges for the line. And the referee thinks that he may be got there and then was forced back. So he's called for the video referee. Oh, oh let's have a look at this. I thought Renoff was going to score anyway. Steve Renoff has said no. He's shaking his head and said, no, I didn't get there. That's a try. What? He's wrong. <laughs> he's... <laughs> He's got no idea. Uh, thanks, Gus. <laughs> Would you thank Steve? <laughs> thanks, Steve, for his input. Oh, dear. He gets down low. He puts the ball over the line. No problem with that whatsoever. Darren Lockyer has already come up to try and put his team in front through the conversion. And I, I really thought that Renoff was going to go all the way to the play before. Didn't think he was going to throw the pass. Bainicolo showed plenty of speed to... To catch him. And there's the green light. And Daly. Oh, he's back on the field. I'd say he would have stopped this try, but very, very unusual to see him leave. Beautiful work from Steve Randolph. Just great strength. He pushed off David Boyle. Vainicolo came from behind, and it was a good decision from Renoff because he was going to get tackled short. An even better decision from the next play to try and get the ball over from dummy half. The important thing is here he gets gets down low. Kenny Nagus on one side. And Vayner Carlo on the other. In fact, it's Croker coming back now. Well, can I just say in answer to your question earlier in the game, Ray, about the comparison between Newcastle and Brisbane. I think that's the difference in Brisbane in 19... 98, so compared with five or six years ago, they don't have the pure blinding speed in the back line that they did. Pretty much the same players that they've had for the last five or six years. Where Newcastle are so brilliant, they're really scary with the football. This side is, is, is more controlled and certainly still a very, very good football team, but they don't threaten you with the same speed they had years ago. Five years ago, Stephen Off would have put that around and left the post untouched. Lock here, a metre in, 25 out. He's hit it, but he's hooked it. This game is all locked up. Ten minutes to go. And it's 18-18. We'll be back in just a moment. There's no chance of Steve finding out what that Bailey thing was all about. Why he was pulled off. We start. Welcome back. Our viewers returning. Hancock. 12 metres out from his own line. He played a very important part in the try. Eventually for Steve Renoff. His 11th of the year. G. Held by Bran and Wolford. Lee. Sailor. Daly underneath. Still mesmerised by his withdrawal from the game. Just when that try occurred. Webke. Lockyer. Oh, McFadden came up quickly. Lockyer gets a kick away. Vanicolo. 
Goes back to shadow it. Well, Peter Sterling, who are our field goal kickers? Well, in the past, you'd say that Canberra would have the advantage there, but that's, I guess, through the likes of Ricky Stewart. Darren Lockyer, I think, would be the, the exponent for Brisbane. I know that Lang has won a State of Origin game, but it's certainly not one of his high suits. And for Canberra, well, I guess Laurie Daly, maybe David Ferner. I don't know about the two Macs, what they do. I'll have something on David Ferner. Graham. OK, I'll put it back on you. Who's more likely to go for the earlier field goal? Wolford. It's been like... a real spark in the second half. McFadden. Daly. We're told that he just simply wanted a break. And Sailor comes down with it for Brisbane. 18 points all, seven and a half to go. Lockyer. Carroll. Daly trying to use the momentum of Carroll to take him to the sideline. Darren Smith. Swatting away from McFadden. He comes again with Froker and Hetherington. But now Brisbane have reached the halfway. Struggle is on, like a tug of war. Let's get it down there and take a shot. Scott. Langer. Floating it, guiding it down into the corner. Best place to defend, McNamara. Just comes a battle for mistakes now. Brisbane will try and sprint up here and, and force an error from this Canberra side. Otherwise, let's just play it tight. The first one to crack will give up field position and an opportunity for the field goal. Second tackle has gone for Canberra. Now the third is gone. They're 17 away from their own line. It's going to need an incisive run or a very good kick. Pearson. The fourth is gone. Daly has stayed down after that last movement as Ferner comes centre field trying to find a support. He does so in Nagus. Nagus looking for a gap. Nagus is still going. Gets it back for Danicolo. Danicolo, he's got the full back to beat. He steps him up and he set sail. He's over the line. Danicolo has scored for Canberra. And he'll score plenty more for the Raiders in the years to come. You think it's the match winner, but you never ride off the other mob. Can I just butt in, Peter? It was great to see Ken Nagus play a part in this. He plays an enormous role in this. Through Renault, pushes off Kevin Walters, attracts another two defenders. Hancock can't hang on to the youngster, and the big step, Darren Lockett doesn't even go close to getting him under the post. Six points, they won't get beaten. Kenny Nagus... A lot of confidence by Mal Meninga shown in Kenny Nagus bringing him straight back in after well, basically 12 weeks out. Vanicolo, there was a tug of war early in the season over the surfaces of this young man. And I've only seen him on a couple of occasions, but I've been very impressed every time he's gone around. Well, Phil Gould. Lux of fortune. And she smiles. In contrasting ways, but what about the day of Ken Nagus? That'll be a nice finish for him. He'll sleep a little bit better now that that's under his belt. They're getting a few players back now, the Raiders, and I know Laurie Daly's confident they can still figure it in. Ferner converts. Well, Sterlow's made the boldest prediction of the day. They won't get beaten. Here it was, Steve. This is the try. Yeah, we'll put it down, but quite simply, the Raiders have controlled the ball a lot better in the second half. Nagus involved again. He's looked dangerous every time he's touched the ball when he's held onto it. The offload there. Vanicolo, look at him go. Who said he runs over the top of blokes? Getting a bit slippery here late in the afternoon. Locking I said it. What are you talking There's about? Who try. said it? I Hi said it. Hee ya. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, it's not such a bold statement when you have a look at who they're playing out there. <laughs> I've seen these Queenslanders do it time and time again. I'm only thinking back a week at the, the most recent occasion. But now, so important for Canberra to work through this set of six, get a good kick down into the corners, 
muscle up in defence and the two competition points is theirs. So Canberra set for victory. Prittis, Wolford, now McClendon. Put away by Langer. Daly punching it down, taken on the legs by Saylor. He played at the ball, which meant that everybody was placed onside. Walters, Ruben Ricky's lifted, ran off, loses the ball. Now Canberra will set it up for a field goal, probably. Pearson. Wolford's pass, finding firmer. Bodies meshing down in the right-hand corner. Canberra taking it towards the centre. Ricky. Trittis looking for his captain. Pearson! Lowy Daly field goal. Yeah, straight behind the ruck. He's pointed Boyle in front of him to give him some protection. There's the shot taken by Daly. Hits the upright. Wolford takes the ball. Goes out wide. McNamara is over the line. McNamara has put it down. Well, I think we're going to the video referee again, but the naked eye from a distance away. It looked as though McNamara got there. Planned move from Canberra. Laurie Daly hit the post. Bounce back into the arms of Simon Wolford and a great pass. We'll have to see on the video replay here whether or not the players were offside in front of Laurie Daly. It came back off the post, all the Canberra players were in front of him, and I don't think he moved forward after he kicked it. Yeah, Here I it is, this... back to Daly. They're offside. Yep. That's what it was all about. Wolford in front of Daly, and Daly didn't put him on side. Just have a look. Canberra. The ball comes back to to Laurie Daly, and you'll find that, well, I'm not sure, it's one of these two players who catch it. Just watch Daly after he kicks it. His play continues. He stays there, and it's the front player of those two that Wolford. I underline, Wolford. Yeah. That gets it, and he's he's definitely offside, so I'll have a look at that. And the Brisbane side will have two and a half, just under, just over two minutes, sorry, to get this one out of the fire. And no try. This is rather anticlimactic, I suppose, from the crowd's point of view. Ricky Stewart loving every moment of today, particularly the second 40 minutes. Just under two minutes to go now. G. Put down by. Clyde and Daly. Champion. Brisbane trailing by six. Langer across for Lockyer. Lockyer's in the space. Lockyer's got Renoff coming up on the inside. Renoff's heading for the corner. Renoff pulled down seven metres from the line. And numbers to the right if they can get a quick play of the ball in hands. It's been slowed down, still a chance. Hancock through from Walters. Out to Langer. Langer for Lee and Lee held by Daly and Ferner. He's a mile offside, Laurie Daly. Langer. Walters kicks back. Scott is after it, but underneath it, Prittis takes the mark. So they will crawl out to the 20 metre line, Canberra. The, the statement wasn't so bold now. <laughs> what about this side? Lockyer, straight into a gap. He knew Renoff was coming up on his inside. Great chase there from Luke Prittis. Eventually, David Ball coming over the top, but I agree with Phil Gould. There was no way known Canberra ever got back on side, but I think that's just been the trend on for the last 79 minutes for both teams. The Raiders crowd count out the time. 
the first time they felt confident all day. They can celebrate now. So, what a victory. What a weekend. The leaders of matches right across Sydney that failed to get home. Canberra from behind. 14-6 at the break of 124-18.